good to be here. I love coming online. It's just so much better than what I normally do for work. Uh, like I was at work yesterday, and I was thinking, oh, I'd rather be home doing this. This is way more fun than work. I love just talking to guys, talking to you guys, and doing what I love. And what I love is writing. So I'm excited to do some more today. And um, I hope you like my setup. I changed my setup a little bit. I um I took this photo of a nice stairs and I, I this is actually somewhere I went. Went to a really nice hotel and they had these really cool stairs there. And I thought they looked very lavish. Uh, you know, I thought they kind of looked like a setting in my novel Gentleman Gun, uh, which I'm writing right now, because Gentleman Gun had kind of has this atmosphere of lavish extravagancies and like extreme wealth. <laughs> and um, when I'm excited for that. I'm excited about that. I got a notification on my phone telling me I went live because I, I follow myself on my old account because I wanted to see what would happen. So, like, I was my first follower because <laughs> I made a separate account. Like, I made an account back in 2010, I guess. So I, I was I was 10. I was, think I was 9 years old when I made this account. <laughs> and I've been, I've, I've been using it for st uh, streaming. I would watch PewDiePie. And back in the day, I'd watch Yogscast, PewDiePie. But now I've just been using it as like a test account to see um, everything on my account here. And page one noir was working okay, and yeah, everything's good. But like my first ever follower was my test account called Min Me Min Me. Um, maybe I shouldn't have told everyone that, but that's okay. It's fine. What harm can that do? But I'm, you know, that's that's just how it goes. That's just how I wanted to start off. And the exciting thing is that. I might soon be doing a collaboration with someone, a friend of mine. She does a, she does Twitch as well, and we talked about doing. We just talked about briefly doing some game together or something, because we both have an audience and we both wanted to share that with each other. And you know, I think the dream is to get a large viewing, a viewing base, so that you can kind of do this often and have a huge like crowd to, f to perform for or to stream for and everyone can just chill I think that's kind of nice but today I wanted to get into my writing um, as always <laughs> and you can you can watch me and uh, I will just talk and chat I'll do some writing do some chatting I, um, I have some pretty cool stories at work yesterday that happened pretty uh, pretty Eh, kind of cool, kind of not cool, but that's what happens at work. You have people who are good, people who are not so good. That's fine. And today I'm going to do my writing. So I'm gonna I'm gonna to um, connect my document. And welcome to the stream. Thanks for joining. I'm gonna do some writing today. A whole chapter of my novel, Gentleman Gun. And you see the stairs in front of you. This is a staircase I went to. Uh, and this staircase was in a hotel and uh, the reason I took a photo of it was because I really liked the aesthetic it was very uh, kind of it kind of reminded me of like really lavish like Victorian style maybe a little bit more modern than Victorian but it reminded me of my novel Gentleman Gun um, and I'm going to try and include this staircase into my writing on this stream and uh, I think that's going to be easier to do I have my plan for what I'm going to write. So the first thing I'm going to write is maybe, um, this, oh, I don't even know, like maybe the scene where he, maybe he enters a hotel that looks like this. Um, but I think I'll get it. I think as soon as I open up my document and I sit down with it, I will get into it. Um, okay, let me just edit this and see if I can make it more clear. Um, yeah. I've never been very good at editing. Like, I'm using OBS now. <laughs> I'm using OBS, but this is the first time I've ever used a proper editing software or anything for live streams. And it should be good now, right? Is that okay? Um, I think so. Yeah, I think so. I kind of, um, yeah, so I've never done, like, OBS streaming before. Um... Today I'm doing my writing, and if you don't know the background of my writing, this is a uh, mystery, kind of like a noir detective fiction. It's not so much, I don't know, it's kind of a little bit less detective-y and more action-y, but I love noir style, which is just, 
you know, every man for themselves, every woman for themselves. They put material objects above wealth, above, oh, sorry, material objects go above anything else. Uh, people will really be able to eat, to get what they want, dog eat dog world. And what I've done is I've taken that noir concept and I've applied it to a, like a futuristic dystopia where the world is uh, engulfed by capitalism. There's no more governments, there's no more uh, presidents, there's no more countries. In fact, uh, instead, everything is ruled by four different uh, companies, four different sectors. So we're going to see how that can affect the world and the characters who live in it. Um, now, the part, I just want to write a chapter today. Um, so it could be even Red Suit Rescues MC. So maybe this could, yeah, I haven't done anything here. So this could be what I do today. I think that's a good idea. All right, so we're going to focus on the scene where Red Suit rescues the, the main character. So what happened previously? Well, uh, the main character was a servant for this company. Um, a big big player, a big company that owns mansions and around the, around the entire world. And his job was to basically be a host. So he would host parties. You know, imagine that's like a party planner. That was his job. He was a host. He was hosting big, huge, lavish guest parties for um really rich patrons people with money um then what happened was this guy named the red suit approached him and basically said i have a job for you and he he will later i guess like steal them because like i said this guy is he hosts parties and that means he's kind of like an asset so to be he's an asset of this company so in the future it means that um, people will basically go back to being property of countries. Um, now, where am I getting this from? Well, do you know K-pop? K-pop um, industry is where they have all the diff or they have all their you know they have their dancers and their celebrities, and they have a huge following all around the world. People love people love it. People go crazy for it. So the thing I wanted to do was to take that idea of of K-pop where the the actors and performers are, are sold and bought by companies, kind of like football players, and they kind of live completely under their company. Everything they do, everything they say, um, the places they go to, and even the things they eat are completely controlled by the companies who um, who own them. And not, not all companies are like this. There are definitely exceptions. Some companies are better than others. Like um, the company that owns BTS, are probably one of the better ones, but even they're not that great. Um, so I think I would love to include something like that in my writing. That's uh, that's kind of my whole, the whole purpose of me including like people being bought by companies and traded by companies, and and um, exactly that's exactly what I wanted to do. Uh, so in this case, the red suit will come and snatch up this guy from the company, and. Um, it's kind of like he steals the asset, which is the which is the main character. The main character is an asset, and the red suit kind of guy is gonna be a really powerful character. You can kind of think of him as an antagonist at the same time as a protagonist, because you can understand his motives in this capitalist world, but at the same time he challenges the fabric of what's normal in this world. So. We kind of look at him as a bit of a uh, villain slash hero kind of character. And it's a little bit of give and take on both sides. So that's kind of a cool dynamic I have set up here. But for now, um, Red Suit has... Uh, I won't spoil... Without spoiling too much, Red Suit has gained control of the main character. And the main character has uh, done the first test, we shall say, which is to kill one of his colleagues as a test of loyalty and he's passed so of course now the red suit is going to come and rescue him all right so let's get started um so the very first thing that happens is this guy named hiro which is a japanese name <laughs> comes and he does he what happens i forgot it's been a while since i wrote this part i usually go just through it I'm more of a pantser than a planner. Like I kind of just uh, go off the seat of my pants and just write, you know, just write as it comes to me. And then later I'll go back and edit. So that means a lot of what I do write 
doesn't actually make it to the final draft. Um, but that's okay because they say kill your darlings, and that's something I'm, you know, I'm experiencing. So it's not a huge problem for me. So that being said, it's it's time to do some writing. All right. Did did my character get knocked out? Yeah, okay, I got it. Hito was standing. Yeah, so let's just let's just relax and do some ch quiet writing for a little bit. And uh, if you have any questions, you can ask in chat, or even if you just want to say hi, I'd really appreciate it. Um, this is just going to be like a really chill stream.
Hmm, I don't know. How do I write this? How do I write this bit? I kind of want the idea for it to be like the spaceship or the cruiser comes through the hall, comes into the hallway. Like smashes through the wall. Oh, I got a better idea. Hmm. So the girl saves him. Okay. I think that's a good that's a pretty good way to go. The girl saves him, not spaceship or anything.
I just want to read. Um, I just want to read what I wrote back before, because I want to make sure I get my story straight and kind of give me a guide as to where to go next. Or I can just make it up. It's fine. If I just make it up, I can, and I like it, I can go back and change it later. Okay, this is good. What was she wearing in this stage? I think she, I, I think she was wearing a dress, right?
Alright, welcome to the stream. I'm just doing some quiet writing. So we can sit back and relax with a cup of tea. Uh, feel free to ask me any questions about what I'm writing. I'm very happy to chat. And I'm just going to write an entire chapter of my novel, Gentleman Gun, which is a noir action sci-fi. So I hope you uh, enjoy. Yeah, ask me any questions you want. Um, I think I think I'll write for an hour. Um, and then when the hour passes, I might do some reading. Or maybe just chat with you guys, which will be really exciting. Yeah. Uh, one second, guys. I have to go check something. I've just come back. Uh, that was that was uh, my girlfriend. She went off to a job interview, so I ha so I wanted to say goodbye to her. But I'm back now. Yeah, today was today was just a pretty chill day. I've got um university later, so uh, I might stream even for three hours today because I haven't done a three hour stream before, and I and I really enjoy doing this. I love when um I love when I can just talk to people when they come online, and I can just spend time here just chill with you guys, and I think I'll have more time today, cause I think she'll be out for a little bit, so it's good. Um, but now it's just gonna be me and the beautiful art of writing, which I love. I really love. Yeah, she hung up the phone. Okay, so I want this character to be really a really um like a strong kind of female character. The thing is, um, I in my university because I did creative writing in university, and the thing is, they tell us that um sometimes when you write a, from a character who you don't have any experience um, being, then it will come out a little bit funny. So I'm I'm you know I'm a dude. Uh, I'm trying to write a female character, so I just have to be kind of aware of how females act or might behave or might think or something, just so I can write a realistic female character. Um, but what I like to do is when I'm writing, I like to, uh, I like to just give a, fo give a focus on just getting the work done, and uh, then going back and editing when I need to or when it's convenient to me. So um, that's exactly what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do with that. So she hung up the phone and she. Um, turn to me. Thank me later.
chestnut. What's like a brown mahogany wood? No, mahogany brown. Mahogany. What's like a really nice kind of brown, dark brown? I don't want to use food. I want to use like nature to describe her. I might say chestnut. Chestnut brown is pretty good. I could say um, I could say spruce brown. Spruce brown. Big mm, spruce. Minecraft spruce. <laughs> spruce brown hair. How long spruce brown hair? I guess that makes sense. How long spruce brown hair flicked behind her like a wave? So. Let me think now. Is my microphone on? Hello, hello. Yep, it's on. Just wanted to always be sure of that. Great. Okay. I think. Now, I've never used OBS before, right? I said that before. So I want to make sure that my microphone quality is a lot better than on Twitch. It seems like now is better. But like I checked my other video before and the microphone quality was really bad. Um but I didn't stream yesterday because I was at work. Um what do I do for work? I I'm a cleaner. So cleaner. So it's a it's a pretty labor laborious job. But it can also be a bit therapeutic because we do a different, you know, as a cleaner, you don't, you don't just stick to one job. You do a few different kinds of jobs. Um, one such job we do is we, uh, cl we clean the, um, we clean the, uh, sorry, my mom texted me. She went to a COVID-19 exposure spot. Uh, so I need, I texted her, I said, hey, ma'am, I said, this place that you went to had a COVID case. You might need to go get tested. And she just replied saying that she was there. So I need to help her and tell her what she needs to do. I say, you need to, I say, like, when you get, you know, when you get COVID here, you need to completely isolate, same as everywhere. So, like, we have the COVID list exposure. And once you get COVID-19, you have to isolate immediately. That's just kind of how it goes, right? So, um... I'll tell her that. I'll tell her that she needs to take, you know, be careful and stay safe. Um, yeah, I've just texted her. I don't want to call her on stream because this is, this is my stream, uh, stream time, but I'll just send her a text to let her know and she should be okay. I just said to her, um, if you go, cause like, if you go outside and they say that the place you've been has had a case, then you have to, you have to go home immediately. And you also have to make sure that you quarantine and book a test, go get COVID-19 tested. Yeah. So that's all.
Yeah, I really want to get, I really want to set up my stream and get like a nice face cam one day. I'm just thinking of how I can do that the best because like I have some ideas, like maybe getting a nice location to stream in. I could stream in my bedroom, but there's some nice places outside, like the park I could go to, and just sit in the park and write. And that'd be nice, just peaceful. Do that for a little bit. But I think I'm gonna put my phone down. My mum's okay. I'm worried about my mum, you know. That's all. Should be fine. I've got friends who work at shopping center nearby where I live. Um, three forty minutes from my house. And this shopping center, they've had cases there. And uh, my friend and his girlfriend, they work there. But they work there every day. But even though even though they've had cases there and they still go to work, um, I've seen them. They've been fine. They haven't had COVID. They got tested. They've been fine. So it's really not a big deal, I don't think. Um, because I think even if you, even if there's a COVID case in the area, you're probably okay. Because like where I live, especially, there's not really a huge concern, because there there's like zero cases more or less. Like we only have one or two, but then they pretty much get jumped on immediately. So we're we're really lucky in this part of the world. Yeah, but, but I think the fear is just that we will have a bad one and it will become too late and we'll just lose control. But I think um, where I live right now is pretty good. I don't think it's a big concern. I'm also looking to do some YouTube videos. Hey, this uh, I mean like I just, I, I put all my I put all my streams up on YouTube, but um, when I'm finished, so if you miss a stream, you can go back and watch it. But um, at the same time, um, I'm going to try to do some additional videos. So try to do some informative videos talking about different literary techniques. Maybe do some history and maybe... Um, but I want them to be a kind of educational slash entertaining thing. You know, I don't want people to be bored when watching it. Yeah. I want people to be entertained because I think that's the point of Twitch is to you know you're an entertainer you want to bring entertainment to people you don't want to be you don't want people to join and be bored and I think finding that fine line with something like writing and entertainment is funny because you know a lot of writing is quiet I say this before a lot of writing is quiet so doing a fun live stream where you're writing can be a bit tricky maybe but these are the boundaries that we have to work around. on quiet writing from now on so I'm gonna do that because this stream's getting kind of kind of inactive so I'm just gonna keep on doing my work
It wouldn't be the main entrance to the mansion, I don't think. Towards the... Ugh, the function room, wouldn't it? I don't know, where would she go? Would she go into the function room? There'd be other staff in there, wouldn't there? No, maybe it's fine. The function room. Right, good. Next segue. Patrons, they do, oh, it's patrons, it's a patron party. So this party is for people who have, like, invested in the company, I guess, and who have most of the money. It's like a private club or something, and they come to this party to, um, to make money. They come to this party to, like, celebrate, I guess, or to, like, it's like a special members only club for this company. I think that's good. They try to, yeah, so every, they, they have this party, this is like every year they have this party for regular guests. But, um, the two men who got killed earlier in the story were like cleaners. <laughs> and now that they're dead, there's like gonna be no one around to take care of the place. So we can see like the place slowly deteriorating. That's a cool idea. Like, he could, maybe he comes back and the place is like retaken by nature. A little bit. And the boss kind of like doesn't care about it. Oh, so I think I want to do a bit of reading later this stream. I think that could be fun. Do a little bit of reading. A little bit of reading.
Now I want this guy, this to be really cool. Was a sleek. This is the really cool. <laughs> it's cute. So our main character is this red guy. Main character, sorry. I'm telling the story from his perspective. Um, but this ca this person who is coming now suddenly is indeed the red suit man. Um, uh, yeah, I'm happy with this. I'm happy with this. I'm just going to keep writing to the end. I really want to start talking about some funny stories that I have written down here, just for my own life, um, just for a change of pace on the stream. But I'm going to finish this chapter, uh, and then for the rest of the stream, I'll just chat, and maybe maybe that'll be good. Talk about something I want to try, try doing. And tomorrow I will stream again. So maybe we'll do something different tomorrow. I just need to think of an idea. Something cool though.
Alright, alright. Let's do a little bit more. How do I write this? Okay, how do I, I want this to be not like cheesy or cringy. I want this to be good. Oh, I know. Does that make sense? With a lightly coloured light wood. Because like, it's not a heavy wood and the colour is also very light. Does that kind of come through? I could say like a yellow light, like a light yellow wood or something. But does that talk about colour or weight? It's a very good question. I'm going to shift my movement. I'm going to go over to my desk because I was sitting on the couch, but I need better. I need better posture. So now I'm sitting on my desk. And I'm hooking up my mouse, and I'm going to charge my computer. And we're good. We're in now. All right. We're in, and we have my pen, my notebook, and my phone. I can sit down and go back to writing. This is good production. Oops, sorry. It's my chair. That was my chair. I just scraped it along the floor. Um, I hate that noise. Like everywhere, like where I live in my apartment, um, the sound comes through on the comes through on the walls. I can hear other people moving their chairs, and they can hear me moving my chair. And it doesn't. It never causes problems with the neighbors. Though one time, like one time, I went out of my apartment, and the neighbor was was in the lift with me. And it was, I don't know, it was whatever. We didn't talk. We didn't even make eye contact because I think it was just, eh, awkward. You know, we hear each other's noises, so I don't think, I think we're a bit scared of what we hear over the other side. Conversations or um, sounds like the chairs, you know, that irritate us, but we don't want to bring it up or, I don't know.
Alright, so I'm going to write this plain scene. This is kind of the scene where everything gets answered. So in this scene, the motivations, the true motivations of the Red Suit Man come out. I think that this needs to be a very long chapter talking about his ambitions for this world. So we're going to get like, a, like I'm going to skip a little bit and get into it. No, no, hold on. I won't. So the thing he sees are flags. He sees countries. He sees countries' flags. Like he recognizes them from the old world. The old world is like the world of governments and countries because they don't exist anymore in this in this story. Um, from the old world. There were two. They were side by side. One was blue, white, red, and decorated with stars and stripes. And the other was a crimson red with a yellow symbol. The banners, um, So, of course, the flags he sees are the Soviet Union and the USA. So, what's this symbolize? Well, it symbolizes governments and countries. Because, um... Who? Uh, in this world... Excuse me. In this world, there are no... Of course, there's no governments, there's no countries. So, what exactly happens is... Um... The world is ruled by corporations. And when the world is ruled by corporations, there is no government. There is no centralized power. So what ends up happening is this red suit man kind of reminisces about the past and remembers when the world was ruled by governments. And I think he he wants the world to be like that again. So he's trying to establish his own kind of world government and put himself at the head of power. And by doing that, he will, by doing that, he's going to um, take 100% of the wealth and also be like the champion of the world, essentially. Uh, champion of people. So he wants to try and become this champion of the people. So we need to establish that in our text. Uh, I'm going to do a little bit of that now, and then I'm going to switch over to writing, to doing something else, maybe some reading.
Say you spell corridors. Weird. I always thought corridors was spelled like this. Okay, interesting. I never really used to know how to spell corridor before. <sighs> I never knew how to spell corridor before. There we go. I'm tired. I don't know. I slept well. I slept very well last night. But I think just sitting down and just writing makes me feel a bit tired. Um, you know what? That's okay. Because it you don't have to, you know, because you run out of energy, you lose, you lose stamina, you start to get a bit slow. That's fine. You know, I'm just trying to take my time. It's important not to push yourself too much with this kind of thing. But like the, what I've done today, this is like so much more progress than I was making when I wasn't streaming. When I wasn't streaming, I was making like very, very sm slow progress. But when I write on stream, it's like really great incentive just to keep going, because you know I'm getting I'm getting this done, and then I can put it on my YouTube, and I can have an audience, do it online, talk to people. It's great. I it's, you know something it makes writing something I can look forward to, because there is more than just sitting down at a page and staring at it. Now I have kind of um, other things to do at the same time. Now I'm gonna talk about I'm gonna talk about the main reason behind why Red Man Red Suit Man does this. I don't know, I kind of picture Red Suit Man as like the G mod guy. If anyone knows the G Man. I imagine, like, when I think of Red Suit Man, I just think of the G-Man, but in a red suit. Because the G-Man is this character with so much mystery around him. And, you know, he wears a suit, which doesn't help. So I kind of imagine the Red Suit Man to be similar. You know, this character with mystery around him. No, nobody really knows what his intentions are or why he does what he does. But, and that's the reason why. Whenever I, whenever I see... Uh, G-Man or whatever I think of Red Suit Man, they always appear to be the same, the same character, same person. Um, if you don't know who Red Suit Man is, maybe I can show you a picture. Oh no, I mean, not Red Suit Man, I mean G-Man, my bad. Is this lovely looking fellow? Right here. This dude, G Man. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Oh no, this is what I imagine Red Suit Man to be. Just imagine this guy, this guy, but with a red suit instead. Hold on, can I draw on it? <laughs> Come up. Uh, red. Imagine this. Oh, it's really. It's gonna take a long time. Just imagine him in a red suit. That's this is Red Suit Man basically. What I'm doing here right now. This is Red Suit Man. Woo, it's me. It's me, it's Red Suit Man. Woohoo. <laughs> cool. That's him. And you can think of him as kind of a communist. Because he wants these he wants he wants controlled government. He wants a government that controls everything. Uh that's what he wants to base his economy. That's what he wants to base his world off. That's what he bases his ideals off, is this kind of character like that. Maybe I can actually create kind of like a red suit guy. Can I? And then do like... Mm, do some black over the top. <laughs> kind of like this. See? Red suit, choo, 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 choo. Like that. <laughs> cool. And then... Mm, 
So I definitely did not pass art class. You know, that's what you can kind of judge from this. <laughs> cool. Uh, did I pass my, my I have one art class experience like one time I was with my teacher and so I was with my teacher we were in a class I was sitting with my friends and we were doing um, like we we're doing like stencils I think that's what you call it stencils is where you use like the stencil knife it's like it's like a type of knife and they give you a foam canvas and what they have what they do is they will tell you that you have to use the knife and you have to cut into it to create designs. Um, maybe I can show you some pictures of, of stencil art. Is that what it's called? Stencil? Stencil art. I think so. Let me see if I can find an image of it. But, no, that's not stencil. What am I talking about? Knife art. I don't know, I don't know what the name is, but she told us, okay, you're using, like, Stanley knives and if you cut yourself, um, please don't come to me. Because I told you not to cut yourself, something like really like arbitrary like that. Anyway, uh, we're, we're going into art class and I'm really excited. I have this whole plan to make like, a beautiful painting. And guess who cuts himself like ten like ten seconds into the into the painting, right? Uh, so I start bleeding out on my thumb. Like I cut my thumb. It wasn't a big cut. It was just a small kind of cut. But um, I was a bit worried because I thought. You know, my teacher's going to get angry at me now. So I go to my friends. I'm like, oh, what should I do? I cut myself. And they say, oh, Noah, you should go to the teacher. And I said, oh, but won't she be angry? And they said, nah, she'll be fine. You know, she'll understand that it's okay. Uh, I was like, oh, okay, sweet. So I can go to the teacher. So I went to the teacher with my cut, you know, with my thumb bleeding out. And she sees my thumb. And she just gives me this awful stare and says, what did I literally just say? And makes it this big deal, you know, in front of the class. And she gives us all this big lecture. And I'm just standing there with my thumb bleeding. And I'm like, okay, can I, can I have some help? And that wasn't, yeah, that wasn't nice. But that teacher got fired later, so it was fun. That's a whole different story, though. Uh, by the way, thanks to anyone who just joined the stream. I, I really appreciate it. And how's your day and anything? You can ask me any questions about what I'm doing. Uh, I'm not just I'm not writing. I'm I'm doing a little bit of writing, but I just this is my character for the story, Red Suit Man. Maybe as like more of a monobrow like this. Would you? <laughs> okay. Wait, I was I was writing, but now I'm now I'm becoming an artist. Hey, he says uh, he says writers can't be artists. Well, maybe not me, but, but we'll see. Maybe I should focus on my writing. Where was I? Up here. Yep. So the octopus arms around the corridor. Well, octopus arms. Tentacles, aren't they? The te oh, what am I doing? Tentacles. Octopus tentacles. Octopus arms. Arms is fine. That... They kind of like wrap around the main rooms. So like you can imagine like the main rooms of the mansion are inside and then there's like all the hallways kind of warping around the outside like an octopus. And that's what I'm kind of trying to get the image of here. Um, I think it's pretty easy to do. I think that's pretty straightforward. So what happens next? So now he talks talking about his ideology. So I think we're going to skip down a little bit. We need to write some filler, but I just want to get to the main content, which is him writing his ideology. I'm oh, sorry, me writing the ideology of the Red Suit Man. The Red Suit Man explained his ideology. All right, so we're just we're just gonna write it now. He's gonna have this huge like exposition about it. Exposition? Oh, I really need to get my phrases right. What does this mean? Exposition? What does that mean? Hold on, let me Google it. A comprehensive description and an explanation of an idea or theory. I was correct. So he's giving his exposition. I doubted myself, but I was correct. Um, he's giving his exposition about his ideology and about what he thinks. What he thinks makes the perfect society. So you can think of him as kind of a weird communist slash... Um, 
interested in dictatorships and authoritarian in this completely capitalist world. And that's that's like completely radical ideas in this world, like it's the most radical you can think of. And he's the only one who seems to be brave enough to pursue it. But I think maybe later we can find other other, other characters with the same like, idea. And maybe they're all working with the Red Suit Man to try and create this um, utopia, as they call it. Uh, and maybe it. And I think I think I would like to see like the world does kind of succumb to this utopia that people start to get angry at their bosses and stuff, and the companies that control them, and eventually this this whole corporation, corporate world, will just fall on its head, and the governments will start to rise again, kind of like what we have now, but maybe worse, maybe more like 1984. Kind of like a 1994 thing happens. But not like Big Brother or anything. Okay. The Red Seat Man explained his ideology. And he says...
I think that's a good baseline uh, for what we for what we want to say. I I do want to make this a lot longer. So he's saying that he wants he has this dream to make the world basically ruled by one person, which will be him. Uh, he wants to be the ruler of the world, kind of like a king or maybe an emperor, with his daughter at the seat of the throne. Actually, that's a good idea. His daughter could be the heir to the throne, so he wants to make himself an emperor or something. And he wants to take this power away from the corporates that rule the world and give it to himself. And then that's why maybe his daughter will support him because she wants to be the empress. So after her father passes away, she will be the empress. That is why he wants to create the centralized government that will that will support people. No, um, they want to get the people on their side. If you think back to communist, or if you think back to the Sardom of Russia, when people were living in this, people were living, just living their lives, and they were very, very opposed to the monarchy, and very, very against the king. Um, they were unhappy with their lives. What did they do? They started a revolution. It was the communist revolution, and that became extremely support. They got a lot of support for that, and they eventually overthrew the the king and queen, the Tsar. The Tsar, the Tsar and the Tsarist of Russia's, Russia's monarchy, and established for the first time a dictatorship ruled by Lenin, I believe. Yes. Um. So what did they do? Well, they got the people on their side. They got they made the people angry at the king and queen. They showed them this new system that that could work, where everyone, where no man or woman would would have to live be poor. Everyone could be equal, treated equally. And they advocated it, and eventually they took it by force, and they had a huge support across Russia. Now, this is similar to how the red suit, the red suit will operate in our story. They will, they will sort of seize power for themselves, and to get the people on their side, they will try to, you know, they will get the, they also get the homeless people on their side. Then they'll get the poorer people, and they'll go up, up the social ladder. And eventually, people will start to boycott these companies that that rule the world, and then they will be supportive of the red suit man as their new ruler. And that is the ultimate goal. And of course, our main character is the person who's trying to make this happen for this guy. Maybe he can go around and start spreading propaganda or something about it. And um, you know, the way in which the red, the way in which our main character is going to support the red suit man. Um, will be determined as I write the story. Um, initially, I wanted them to do like missions, kind of like a secret agent. If <laughs> did you ever, did you guys ever watch The Outsider? It's a uh, a film. It's a film about a American ex American soldier who finds himself in Japan after World War Two, and then what happens is he uh, joins the yakuza or like the Japanese mafia, and he starts to you know, go on, like, do these missions, take care of, do, they take care of their dirty, their dirty business, and this is kind of what inspired Gentleman Gun for me. I wanted to have a character who could do this kind of thing, but now I'm starting to think maybe it's going to be more political, as opposed to, like, gang violence, like I was initially going for. So if it's going to be more political, he needs to do more political things. Maybe he can give speeches on behalf of the Red Suit Man or something, because now he's kind of, like, owned by him. He's an asset kind of thing. Um... So that's what's going to happen. But in reality, right, this is the flaw, is that although the Red Suit Man is kind of advocating for this strange communist monarchy thing, the the main character is going to support it. But, um, oh, sorry, the strange thing is that in the end, the Red Suit Man will become the ruler and he will hoard all of the wealth for himself. And then it's going to become a mission to take down the Red Sea Man and maybe try to start a new form of government. So I think the government in this this novel, this global government, is going to change three times. I think it's going to go from a uh, from a corporate kind of controlled world into a monarchy slash communist state that controls the world. And then very quickly after that, it's going to become a maybe like an anarcho uh anarcho what's the word anarcho communist world maybe created by our main character so the go the world will change in three different ways and now these are all ideologies that i have thought a, a lot about in my life um it doesn't necessarily mean i agree with all of them or i advocate for any of them 
I'm mostly just going to write this story and, you know, show you what a world would look like with these different governments or these different political systems in control. That's what I want to do. Um, I know there's like, it's like a real funny thing about being edgy and on the internet with ideologies, but I was a bit edgy. Like I used to be a bit edgy with ideologies. I discovered channels like JREG and stuff. And I was like playing around doing political tests online, you know, real cringe stuff. But no, now now I'm I I just wanna, you know, I just wanna live my life, and you know, be a writer. That's what I wanna do. So whatever it takes, I will be the writer that I want to be. And if that means writing a political novel showing how the world government's changed, then so be it. I will do it because it's something I wanna do. Did you guys ever watch J Reg or anything? Um, I get a lot of my inspiration for this story, like, when I go outside. One thing I do as a writer, like, I've always done this, because I've been writing since I was very, very young, a kid. Like, I've been writing since I was eight, because we used to do writing in school, and I used to really love doing that. I used to do it at home as well. But when, well, what happened was, I used to go, I always go for walks on the street. And that's how I get my ideas, you know, that's how I clear my head. So, one time I was going for a walk on the street, and I noticed, um, I, I was like, okay, today I'm going to pay more particular attention to the homeless people on the street. So, um, what I've been doing is, because my novel is going to focus on the homeless, and also going to focus on the people living in extreme poverty. Because those are kind of the people with the biggest voice in this new system of government that the Red Man controls. You haven't seen Dre Reg? Dre Reg is just this kind of like internet personality comedian guy, right? And he like talks a lot about um, political satire and kind of makes fun of like every single different political ideology at the same time. It's kind of just it's kind of just entertaining, but at the same time, he's being completely sarcastic and completely ironic, so it's kind of hard to tell if he's serious or not, and you don't really know what he himself actually follows. So, I, you know, it's just entertaining to watch. Um, but what I do is I, I'll go out into the street, and I would, like, kind of pay more attention to the homeless people. And I noticed this really cool guy, and I, I heard this... Well, I didn't see him at first. First, I heard the music. There was this really, like, electric dance music playing, um, and when he turned the corner, I saw this dude covered in dirt, and his hair was all sticking out to his, to the sides of his face, and, um, he was pedaling this really funky looking bike, and, oh my, and, um, he had this speaker in the back, and he was playing music out of it, and it was just kind of cool to see. Um, his bike, his bike was, like, clearly it was handmade. Because, like, he, clearly he made it himself, handmade. And he... It was just... It had, like, a basket in the front. But it was, like, a really low-riding bike. Kind of looked like a Harley Davidson with the big handles on top. But he would pedal it. And now that I'm mentioning it, I talked to my friend. And he told me that he knew this guy is a homeless dude who makes his own bikes. And that's, like, his business where he makes bikes for people. Now, that's the, that must be the same guy, actually. I should probably ask my mate about that. That's cool. Damn, okay. But another thing I saw... So I see that guy with the bike. <laughs> he kind of just rides his little bike around town. It's cool. And I see another guy who drums on a plastic bin... Like a pl plastic bucket with... Um, with drumsticks. And he does that in the street. A lot of people like it. A lot of people don't like it. But, you know... I I just... I kind of just sat around there and watched for a little bit to see what was happening and gave me some inspiration to write street performers into my novel. Um, the guy with the bike gave me some inspiration, maybe to write some people who have the businesses on the side, um, you know, doing, doing, you know, so you're going to make money somehow. Uh, one of the characters in my book is a fortune teller. He will, he will come and he will tell your fortune. And, but the, you know, that was one idea, but I think the fortune teller guy kind of changed into just a, like a therapist guy. So there's a guy in the street, who knows about like psychology and stuff, and he will listen to your problems in my story. This is in my story. I made this up now. 
yeah, but that's that's cool. I think I think there's a like I said, you go out for walks and you notice things, and that's kind of like the beauty of being a rider. Riders uh, observe stuff. All right, so that's how the world should be run. I think I'm actually gonna take a break from riding for a little bit, just from now, because like I think I've done enough for today. So I'm going to quickly save my screen. I'm going to save my work and maybe just do some do some reading. Oh, hold on, how do I... I? I'm using OBS for the first time, so I'm getting used to it. So I gotta. Yep, that's it. I think that's how you do it. Yep. And now I gotta save it. And we're done. All right, good. Ah, I can chill now. Control. So the next thing I would like to do today is to do a little bit of reading. Sometimes I like to do a bit of on-stream reading for you guys. Take a story and read it. Last time I did this, I read Roald Dahl. And now, it wasn't just like Roald Dahl's children's stories. It was actually Roald Dahl's uh, darker stories, which are made maybe more of an adult audience. Um, those are basically his tales. One he did called Deception, another one called Cruelty. And one called Lies, I think it's called. I, I have the one called Deception. So I read one story out of Deception on the live stream yesterday. Well, not yesterday. Uh, Sunday, two days ago for me. And uh, people liked it. I had some I had some people stay and listen. And that was really, was like really supportive to have. I love that. And, and I think I might do that again now. Before I go off for the day. So I don't... Let me see what kind of book I have. To share with you guys. Oh, I don't have the one I wanted to read. Oh, no, hold on. I do, right? Show me. Do I have... Oh, hold on. Hey, thank you, Matthew, so much for the follow. I really appreciate it. Uh, have a good night, mate. It's good to have you on stream. And I hope to see you again soon. I'm going to read some of this book. This is a book by... Uh, the same writer as All Tomorrows. You guys may have heard of All Tomorrows. It's kind of trending right now on on the um, on YouTube. Um, but All Tomorrows is essentially a story imagining what humans could have evolved into in the future. So it's a book by it's a book by a guy named C. W. Cosman, John Conway. Sorry, John Conway. <laughs> John Conway. Um. I have to be careful what I show because there might be a few NSFW stuff on here. There was just one scene where there's dinosaurs mating. I don't know if that's allowed on Twitch. I have to be careful, you know. Um, oh, thanks for the heart, Matthew. I really appreciate it. That's really sweet. Um, I'm going to share this with you guys. This is uh, this is just because, you know, one thing I love more, more than most things, even more than riding sometimes, is dinosaurs. I love dinosaurs so much. Even like I, when I was three years old, I think I discovered dinosaurs. Um, I I think I discovered them through either TV video games or maybe um, just like coloring books. I think because I used to get dinosaur coloring books, but I got a few early memories of dinosaurs. So let me just bring up what I'm going to show you guys now, um, and I, we can read this book. But this talks about basically speculative evolution. Speculative evolution is uh, imagining the imagining um, how creatures could have evolved. Actually, I believe the correct the correct term for this is speculative paleontology, because we're looking back in the past. And I just need to bring it up for you guys. How do I do that? I have it on my desktop, but I'm trying to find out how to do it on on um on this app that I got. Maybe I have to do it on Twitch. Hmm. I might have to do it on Twitch. Give me a second. Oh, actually, got it. Okay, here we go. This is all yesterday's by John Coleman. John Conway, my bad. <laughs> John Conway, all yesterday's. Um, now, this book introduces uh, speculative 
paleontology. And there's a lot of really cool art in here. So I'm going to read up from maybe from the introduction. So I'm going to read this for you guys. A desire to imagine the long extinct organisms of the past as living and moving animals inspired has long inspired artists and scientists to clothe bones and other fossil tissues in muscle skin, fur, feathers. In other words, to bring fossil animals back to life in art. We need to clear... Oopsie, what's this? Remove the highlight. Okay, we need to be clear from the start that while there are many things that we surely aren't getting right, there are many other things that we have been that we have to be that have to be regarded as as known unknowns or even as unknown unknowns. It is these areas of doubt and speculation that form the focus of this book. The first ever devoted. Oh, I never. <laughs> sorry, I never actually did show my screen, but you can see where I'm reading up to now. Uh, I am um, here and devoted entirely to paleo art and the, to the more speculative aspects of paleo art. It is well known that the process of reconstructing a fossil animal involves the marriage of both hard data as well as the degree of informed speculation. Hard data involves such things as the lengths and widths of bones and other hard parts of the possible of, of and positions and the positions of specific muscle groups that present living animals. While the creation of a bone and muscle, muscles only reconstruction should be seen as the first steps in, in the depiction of the fossil, um, readers may be surprised to learn that many people who have reconstructed extinct animals have frequently done so without resource to these vital steps. We in fact know that this was true of some of the greatest and most influential paleo artists of all time, the Czech master of ancient animals and landscapes. Ooh, how do you pronounce that? Is anyone in the chat from uh, the Czech Republic or Czechia? <laughs> I'd love to know. All right, let me Google it. How do you pronounce this name? Not really important, but I'm curious. Because that's what we do as writers. We are we are students of the world. Oh, I just got it. It's Zdenek Burian. Zdenek Burian. For example, that's actually a really cool name. For example... Best guess the life appearance of dinosaurs and other vertebrates by fleshing out other museum mounted skeleton on paper without using without the use of measure instrument measurements. Rudolf X S Rudolf F. Zalaner's animals most favorably depicted in Zalaner mural at Yale's Peabody Museum of Natural History. Clearly done with only a superficial reference to the skeletons of the species concerned. The pieces of art generated by these individuals remain brilliant, beautiful, and wonderful. But the techniques that were the techniques they used were damaging to the, to the contention that the reconstruction of fossil animals involves science as much as it does art. Indeed, this concept is reflected in the paraphrase claim: "There's more than one way to reconstruct a dinosaur. There's more than one way to to, to skin a cat. There's more than one way to reconstruct a dinosaur." I like that. Um. And in the general idea that dinosaurs and other fossil animals can be reconstructed approximately or with substantial doubt that the, about the most basic ideas remaining, issues remaining. Now, let's just skip into the most interesting part of this book. It's trying to imagine how dinosaurs could have looked. See this thing? What is that? <laughs> See that? So, these are aliens from a different story, I guess. Right? Uh, from C.M. Kozman's Snyad. This is from another one of his book. He's trying to want another one of his books. He's trying to imagine aliens, I suppose. Um, do I need to say none of this work is mine? Because there's, there's none. I didn't write any of this. This is not my book. I put, this is this is someone else's work. Just to be just to be clear, okay? Because I don't think other people show books on here, so I probably just need to be careful. To say that this is not not my art. This is somebody else's art. I didn't have any heart. I didn't have any part in making this. This is just somebody else's. But let me show you some really. Let me show you one of my favorite parts of the book. This this guy trying to imagine dinosaurs as you know colorful, um, because dinosaurs are the ancestors of birds, modern day birds. And what do we see in modern day birds? We see a great variety of colors and like patterns. So they're trying to imagine dinosaurs as the same, right? Uh, I think they even said here something about the skin flaps part, which kind of looks like a turkey. 
They're trying to say something. Have you have you ever? Okay, so this kind of dinosaur is called a Carnotaurus. Here you can see a bull Carnotaurus and a related form, Majungasaurus, in full display. Hold on, is that back here? No. Flashing brightly coloured arms and facial wattles. Facial wattles are these things. To potential mates or rivals. So they're saying that these, they're imagining that this is all just speculative, okay? This isn't actual science, but they're imagining that if they had these flaps of skin, they could have used it to, um, they could have used it to mate, you know, to attract mates or to scare off of, um, can, can competit competitors for mates. Now what this is, is this whole book essentially talks about, if we look at the skeleton of the dinosaur, we see this very, um, very like uh, thin dinosaur. Like you see how the skin it pretty much hugs the bone. The meat and the skin hugs the bone up along here and along the back of the, the back of the dinosaur. Where well, they're trying to say, well, what if dinosaurs were more more fleshed out? You know, what if they had these like details that could not be fossilized, like these soft tissue uh, wattles on their neck? Or and you know how, we can't we can't dinosaur skin is not is a soft tissue so how can we say for sure what kind of uh, what kind of structure they had underneath above you know uh, I just realized my mom, my mouse doesn't appear on the stream is that a, I think that's a problem right <laughs> I think that's a problem my my mouse doesn't appear on the stream I don't know why. Okay, it doesn't matter. Uh, this is a Lasmosaurus. Another thing they try to do is they try to guess dinosaur behavior. So, of course, the Melasmosaurus Melasmos Melasmos was not a dinosaur. Let's get that straight. The Lasmosaurus was a reptilian aquatic marine reptile with a huge long neck. That's what kind of makes it famous and recognizable. Uh, this is, you know, living in the oceans. Even if one day we had access to perfectly preserved fossils, a vital aspect of animal life would still elude our grasp. Behavior is almost entirely lost in the fossil record. Imagine the richness and the strange wonder of animal life today. The eerie, ululating songs of whales, the elaborate middens of bower birds, and the surreal spectacle of a peacock's display could never be deduced from in inanimate remains. Likewise, some of the most spectacular sights of the past will never be seen or even guessed. In this painting, we have managed, um, imagined one such piece of behaviour, in this case as applied to elasmosaurs, long-necked marine reptiles that lived during the Cretaceous period. Although they feature in many books about dinosaurs, elasmosaurs were not members of the dinosaur family. They were reptiles. Um, more specifically known as plesiosaurs. I should have said that. More specifically, plesiosaur, which is the group, the family of reptiles that they were. How was this one? I didn't actually read this part about the giant centipede. Pterosaurs. Pterosaurs are <laughs> the flying creature. They're, rep they're also reptilian. Pterosaur is more closely related to elasmosaurus than it is to dinosaurs. But a lot of people say that pterosaurs are flying dinosaurs, and that annoys me a little bit. It doesn't, I don't know, cause it's just because they're not dinosaurs, they're reptiles. <laughs> but it's a you know, people. I guess people people think of the pterosaurs as dinosaurs because they lived at the same time, and because maybe they were shown that as kids or something. Pterosaurs are everybody's fly, favorite flying prehist uh, prehistoric flyers. How do you say this? Anorognathus. Anorognathus. Anorognathus was a member of the extraordinary group of pterosaurs known as Anorognathids. Members of this group were characterized by extremely small size, short broad wings, and wide frog-like mouths. They are further unusual possessing they are further unusual in possessing short tails and independently evolved feature, as we're seeing only larger, more advanced pterosaurs called pterodactyloids. Judging by judging from their win, wing and skull shape, anorachnids were said to have li likely lived lived like today's insect eating birds. Fascinating. But what does so they? But then, what does this giant centipede have to do with it? Small-bodied animals like bats and uh, anorgophids are rarely preserved in the fossil record, although only several anorognathid this this is tripping me up a bit specimens are known to science. There have been hundreds. If I highlight it, can you see it on the on the stream? 
No, I don't think you can see it on the stream. Okay. Thousands of different anognathed. Oh, sorry, you can see it on the stream. I just checked. You can. Okay. Anognathed species living in the lost forest, cave, and islands of the past. These animals must have lived in a world of danger where they were only where they were, uh, where they were vulnerable to predation, not just from dinosaurs, birds, or other pterosaurs, but also from smaller animals like mammals, insects, spiders, and centipedes of all. Our illustration depicts the death of an anoragnaphid at the formidable jaw like maxillipids of a large of a large maxillipids. What's that? Of a large mash lipids, okay. Of a large scolopendrid centipede. Centipedes have a poor fossil record, but scolopendrids are known from the Cretaceous. In fact, some Cretaceous centipedes are, vir are virtually indistinguishable from modern ones. It is it is wholly plausible that large sc scolopendrids was was snatching small flying animals during the Mesozoic, just as they do today. That would have been cool to think of. So these these guys actually take small birds today, small like bats and birds and eat them. So it's possible they would have done the same back then for reptiles. Interesting. Oh, this one's beautiful. Uh this is an Allosaurus and this is a Camptosaurus on this painting. So you got Allosaurus on the left and Camptosaurus on the right. And these creatures are um traditionally or not naturally in the nature of the uh, predator and prey, respectively. But what they're doing in this painting is socializing. And it's trying to imagine um, this. So in dinosaur documentaries, you always see the T-Rex. He's coming, he's hungry, he's looking for food, and he wants to find the, the Triceratops to eat. Uh, and what, ha what happens here is the classic predator and prey relationship, where the predator comes and tries to attack the prey uh, animal and eats them eventually, or they have a, they have a big battle. Um, but this is probably not something that always happened in nature. There could, there were in nature. There's moments of yes. There's moments of extreme violence and bloodshed and predation. You know that's nature. But at the same time, there would have been a, a, a times where animals were, you know, socially inclined. So I think in this in this uh, painting, they're trying to say that just like um, animals today, like just like some animals today. That could have happened in dinosaur times. So in this, this is a Camptosaurus, and it's coming up close to an Allosaurus, and kind of just as a social gesture. And the Allosaurus is not, no, not it's not doing anything in wrong. It's just, it's just kind of lying there and kind of accepting. He's like, you know, enjoying the present, maybe even enjoying the social interaction a little bit. I'll uh, I'll read this last bit. Paleontology aims to obtain a clear natural view of the past, but grac gracious, gr gratuitous acts of predation and vicious monsters are an undeniable factor in attracting people to the study of dinosaurs. The tradition of paleo art is, such, is full of such epic battles, almost as canonical as a clash of heroes in classical mythology. No children's book is complete without sign scenes of Tyrannosaurus attacking Triceratops, match matched in miniature by a Velociraptor locked in Mortal Kombat with a Protoceratops, and so on. While predation is indeed a vital fact of nature, not all predator-prey relationships end in cinematic bloody struggles. More often than not, hunters give up on chasing their quarry. Predators regularly ignore animals, and that won't be and that won't be the worth the energy to pursue them. And herbivores may cautiously approach meat eaters while seeking common resources such as water, curiosity, fear, intimidation, and exhaustion make predator prey relationships far more complicated than we typically picture them. In this scene, set in the late Jurassic, a herbivorous Camptosaurus is seen approaching a resting Allosaurus in what appears to be a curious social gesture. While Allosaurus was certainly a regular, predator of Camptosaurus, this encounter seems to be a peaceful exception to the norm. In today's ecosystems, big predatory cats and herbivores and herbivores have been also been observed interacting in nonviolent ways. Now this is cool. Like I'm um, I watched that shark documentary, I think it was David Attenborough's uh, Ocean documentaries, one of them. But what happened is we see the sharks kind of swimming around, and during the day, 
sharks will swim around these particular species of shark. They will swim around the reef and just kind of, you know, they weren't they weren't looking for food actively. But what would happen is the sharks would at night time. As soon as night time came, that's when the sharks would spring into action and they start eating and killing everything. But during the day, they were swimming around. They weren't they weren't using their energy to hunt necessarily, and fish and other small creatures could slow could just kind of approach them cautiously. And I think that's what they're getting at here in this artwork and this description of Camptosaurus and Allosaurus. You know, maybe Allosaurus only hunted at night. We don't know for sure because we have no because you know fossil rec uh, behavior does not translate in the fossil record. The only thing that we can determine by fossil record is like size, weight, and maybe cause of death, how long ago they lived, uh, the diet of the animal, if they traveled in herds, if they nested, if they, um, we, we can't, we, there's not a whole lot, no, you know, that's, that's a sizable amount of information we can get, but in reality there's not a whole lot we can get. Um, we can't get behavior. We don't know the color. We don't know how what, what sound the animals made. We don't know exactly how they live their lives. So that we only have this very narrow window into the world of paleontology, and uh, that creates a lot of um, interest into the topic. People are always curious to learn more, and they're always interested in you know the new discoveries that we're being found found in the field. And I'm going to have a little Google online to see if anything major pops up. And maybe I can share something with you guys. Let's have a look at the news and see if there's anything. Um, dinosaurs. And you just type in dinosaurs into news and you go to go to news. And press. Um, let me show you guys what I'm doing. And you press... Where is it? Where's my Chrome? I need to get my Chrome up. I'm still I'm still getting you said the whole OBS thing. I'm still getting used to OBS. It's cause like every time I try to show my screen it comes up with a bunch of options. But you guys can't see that, right? So it's it's not really a thing that you guys might understand. There's just like I press like which which screen to show and there's so many options that come up. Okay, I got it. I think it just took a while to load. There it is. So this is dinosaurs. Um, right, scroll, scroll, scroll. Is there anything down here? 18 dinosaurs along with rides, activities. Nothing really. Oh, there's like, there's not really anything else. Not really anything new about dinosaurs here. That's fine. That's okay. I think I'm going to probably get off the stream now. Uh, I've been streaming for over time from what I normally do. So I think that's all I want to do today. Um, thanks for everyone who came along and thank you Matthew again for subscribing. Um, and I really hope you guys are like the stream. There's a few people who stuck around. I really appreciate your presence. And uh, yeah, that's it. Thanks guys.